Hi, my dear Astro family. Here is Astro Victor, and today we are going to be speaking about the new moon in the sign of Gemini. So, I mean, uh, this new moon will take place uh, on the 30th of May 2022. Uh, the moon and the sun will be at nine degrees and three minutes uh, in the sign of Gemini. So, um which is actually a very good new moon overall i would like to kind of mention that now firstly let's start with uh what gemini is a gemini is a mutable air so a mutable air is about flexibility being open to ideas but also it is talking about uh being kind of like flexible when it comes to uh, mu uh when it comes to uh, communications um air signs are very much about how the mind function how we think about things how we learn or how we communicate the mutable energy is about adaptability making necessary changes but it's kind of shifting its mind from time to time too so meaning that you know i have got this idea now and then i'm gonna be having a different idea tomorrow now, firstly, when you bring up the chart, then you can see that we have got actually a ball shape chart. And the ball shape is about experiences where, uh, where we meant to be kind of get fully involved or fully immerse ourselves in those experiences. Pluto is on the edge of this uh, bowl. So it's kind of like the leading planet of that. And that is really talking about uh, what type of transformation we need to be making when it comes to our way of thinking. Or Pluto slowly but surely, but it de deconstruct things. It wants to kind of deconstruct or demolize the barriers, Capricorn, but also it wants to be breaking down some of the walls, what we have got right in front of us. Maybe that Pluto wants us to speak about these matters. And that's really what the new moon would be talking about. Uh, Pluto is retrograde at the moment. So it's about something which we have to revisit. Maybe it's some of our fears and we're gonna have to make changes around that. Now, the ruler of the new moon, which is uh, Mercury, it's also still retrograde. That's the ruler of uh, the sign of Gemini. And uh, it's quite kind of moving very slowly, which talks about that we might feel that we are getting held back in certain ways. Uh, we are not able to travel. We are not able to study. We are not able to focus on things the way we want to. It's kind of like uh, having that feeling that I'm moving one step forward, two steps backwards. Uh, so therefore, uh, I kind of feel like this is about uh, not necessarily trying to rush things ahead. Also, Mercury retrograde um, is in an Earth sign, Taurus which is again kind of like a fixed energy and that is telling us that it's time to somehow slow down. We need to be a little bit more calculative when it comes to our way of thinking. Uh, we don't need to be rushing things ahead. So whatever the changes we are, most probably whatever the changes we have to be making, most probably we're going to have to kind of think about it uh first before actually we start um uh, initiating and you should remember that the new moon is about this conjunction of the sun and the moon so it's kind of like an initiation point all the time but mercury retrograde and pluto probably say that there is no time to make these changes at the moment we have to be uh very careful of what type of energies uh, we are doing. And there is a little bit of a challenge here because there is Jupiter and Mars also playing uh, a role because they have just had the conjunction. And that is about aspiration, being inspired to do something. It doesn't want to think, it just wants to be jumping into something. It is happening in the sign of Aries. So these two are quite conflicting altogether. 
And because the new moon also happens in Gemini, it doesn't necessarily like, uh, you know, waiting around way too much. It wants to be kind of experiencing uh, things, you know, as much as possible. It wants to be experiencing the highs and the lows. It wants to be kind of knowing what is ahead of us or, you know, it wants to be planning ahead and then jumping right into it. But that Mercury retrograde is about containment. It's about, sometimes it also can indicate that we are stuck somehow in the mud and we don't know, you know, how to get out of that mud. And that's the reason why the Gemini new moon wants us to think about it you know, coming up with a plan um, and um, eventually um, giving us a little bit of a time to, to actually solve all these type of problems. Now, the Gemini moon, uh, Gemini new moon is happening on nine degree. So therefore it is in Gemini decan, but within that it's going to be on um, uh so the first two and a half degree would be Gemini, the next two and a half would be Cancer, the next two and a half would be Leo, and last but not least, it would be Virgo. So there is a little bit of a Virgo flavor, very strong Mercurian type of things. Now, what I'm thinking is that uh, it could talk about agricultural matters, transportation around how the food is going to get to certain type of places, but also it could be talking about um, something to do with how I feel in my own skin. And I need to be talking about that. Uh, but also it could talk about coming up with some type of ideas of how I am going to be changing my everyday routines. Maybe, um, you know, what I've started recently, I'm measuring how many steps I make a day. Uh, and it's just because uh, I want to make sure that, you know, I don't overstress my body or I don't overstress myself when it comes to losing weight, for instance. Uh, but I want to do some type of, um, you know, weight loss type of techniques. And this new moon could actually talk about coming up with some ideas, maybe ho or hopping on onto a bicycle or walking. Uh, Virgo is quite natural. So doing something in a natural way or doing something in the nature, just walking in the park, for instance, can help quite a lot to utilize this uh, Gemini. And it's very much about being on the go, but at the same time, I'm meant to be actually thinking. Another thing which we are seeing here is that Mercury is still also very close to a uh, transiting asteroid, which is called Sedna. And Sedna is on the anerotic degree, which is the 29 degree. And that's where there are the seven sisters, the weeping sisters, basically. So it is also talking about how crucial it is, what we do, for instance, on a communication level. But also because it's in the sign of Taurus, it also talks about how we actually maintain our resources. So it's about looking at what we spend money on, looking at how much food we have got in the cupboard, uh, looking at, for instance, uh, what is happening with uh, agriculture and then how can I actually save certain type of money or just being a little bit more organized about your expenditure. We do know that we have got some agricultural issues going on now because of the Ukraine war anyway. So um you know it's not a shock but we don't might we might not feel it as much we might start feeling it next year if obviously ukraine is not going to be able to plant the seeds this year then uh, for instance whole europe is going to be uh, experiencing some major uh, price increase and i know it has started already but probably we should be expecting that for the next year also but when it comes to uh, on a personal level, Sedna really talks about how much you got betrayed. It has got uh, kind of like issues with masculine energies. So it could really talk about how much you, uh, what, what's your self-worth? What's your net worth? Do you have trust issues towards others? And with that Pluto, uh, the leading planet of the uh, bowl, and also... Uh, with Mercury retrograde, we're gonna, we might need to be actually thinking about that. Now, I did make uh, a several video about Sedna, and then I did mention that it's talking about women issues, 
such as abortion. So we might see some type of regulation or, you know, that we, we, we want to be uh, kind of breaking down the barriers around it or they want um, to kind of think about whether it was the right course of action and all those type of things. So I think uh, this Gemini new moon, if you are at a decision making point at the moment, it's about weighing things up before you actually decide. It's about wanting to know, wanting to learn, want to talk, want to think, <clears throat> and of course, wants to move around, uh, move uh, towards a new goal, for instance. It might be time to make some type of new connections with others because you might get ideas from other people also. So um, another thing which actually comes to my mind is, or looking at some of the aspects of what we see with this Mercury. Firstly, this new moon is actually making a square to Juno. So Juno is something to do with making connections. Now, from a connection point of view, the square is a challenge. So it might be that I want to be making a, a commitment to a partner. I want to be making a connection with someone and they are not reciprocating our approach. Yes, of course, Juno is something to do with the soulmate, but uh, it would really represent someone. Uh, you feel that they don't listen to you or they don't, they kind of cut you out of any type of communication, for instance, or maybe they stopping you from socializing or you want to be going out and then they are actually, you know, they don't allow you or they might see things in a different way. You don't see eye to eye with someone. Of course, if uh, it's a, a relationship matter, this could really talk about that you need to be speaking to your partner about all your psychological blockages and they might be able to provide you some information or they might be able to kind of take off a load of your back um, so that you can ease. Or it might be talking about that, you know what, I cannot relate to people. I've got commitment issues. Uh, or I kind of feel like that somehow people are, in a way, cheating on us. Now, Juno is in the sign of Pisces. So when Juno is in the sign of Pisces, that's about spiritual commitment. Uh, it's about uh, getting the soul to go on a spiritual uh, journey and how we are going to be actually tackling any type of... Uh, you know, uh, abandonment issues or narcissistic issues, for instance. And it could talk about, for instance, having a narcissistic partner around us, and we need to talk to them about it because they might actually not, uh, they might not be aware of uh, how it is actually affecting you. Sometimes what it really talks about is that you might feel that there is a partner you can't talk to because they don't like hearing what you have got to say to them. Um, also, Juno is about, in the sign of Pisces, is about allowing your intuition to fly a little bit so that you can, you can talk about your feelings. Pisces is something to do with your unconscious conflicts. So what is in your head, which I, somehow needs to be released? Pluto wants to actually get that out of your system. The new moon wants you to talk about it. And Mercury uh, being in the sign of Taurus really talks about that. You know what? Slowly but surely, so that doesn't hurt as much. I'm going to release that because Mercury is conjuncting Sedna and Sedna is a painful type of energy. Having a closer look at uh, Mercury. Well, Mercury, as I said, is the ruler of this lunation, and it's in the sign of Taurus, conjuncting uh, Sedna, but it is also squaring Saturn at the same time. Now, very interesting, because what happens here is that Saturn is on uh, 26 degree, and uh, sorry, 25 degree, and Mercury is on 26 degree. So it's the, the, the square between them two, uh, is almost happening, but then in the very last second, both of them de uh, decides to kind of turn around. So what it kind of indicates to us is that it's something which is almost happening, such as, for instance, I almost uh, have got some type of negotiation going on about a job situation, 
or I almost speak to a kind of like a respectful uh, person, but at the end something comes up or it doesn't happen. And, um, and uh, it kind of causes some type of frustration overall. Now, why it is happening is because Saturn is moving extremely slowly at the moment, and it's going to go retrograde very shortly, just three, four days after the lunation. So what Saturn does is, you know, just to kind of keep you, um, keep you kind of happy, it slows down your way of thinking. It actually wants you to be very systematic and very thorough when it comes to those things you need to be actually tackling. It uh, kind of crystallizes your thoughts. So I kind of feel like from this new moon per, per, uh, point of view, it could be helpful. Helpful in a way that, you know what, it crystallizes your thoughts. It's kind of giving a form to it so that you can verbalize it. But of course, the negative side of the Saturn is that if you keep it inside of you, then it's going to eat you inside out. And that's why Pluto is in the sign of Capricorn, to kind of break down those barriers that you are allowed to talk about these. It's kind of like giving yourself the permission to talk about some of your issues or some of your concerns, which actually you have. Sometimes Saturn and Mercury is like, you know what, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, uh, I've got communicational issues, I don't know how to verbalize things. We have got all those type of self-doubts around uh, communicational topics. And uh, it is uh, telling you that, you know what, I don't need to know everything. I can look it up. I can actually connect with others who might be uh, uh, more clever than me. No one has got such an expectation that you need to know the, the encyclopedia inside out. Um, so do not hold yourself back if you kind of have got that type of fear. It might be about that, you know what, you have got some exams coming up and then you do, can't really focus or you have got some personal experience going through at the moment. And um, that's why you kind of feel like you can't really concentrate. Mercury at the same time has got a sextile to Neptune, which can be very nice on one hand and also it could be a little bit of a challenge too. The challenging aspect is that Mercury and Pisces are naturally squaring each other and Virgo and Pisces would be opposing. And those are the kind of like the ruling signs of these planets. So even with the sextile, it could be sometimes a little bit of a challenge. It could be about that we have got the tendency to escape, to kind of run away from any type of issues. But also it could be about... Um, you know what, I have got a so safe spot in my head and I just want to be there and then I fantasize about it or I just go on a holiday uh, because what's not right in front of me, it, does, it can't really hurt me. So, but it also, because it's a sextile, it encourages you to do something with it. A sextile is kind of like a playful energy. It's an opportunity. So it's an opportunity to get into or to get into our subconscious, to use our intuition, and then we can actually verbalize those. Neptune is the planet of visualization. So it's about visualizing kind of like a plan so that we can move forward with that. It could also talk about that uh, I'm just want to, wanting to be very creative. I want to be to a certain way, uh, thinking outside of the box. And Saturn Square can actually help you to look at that plan and crystallize uh, your ideas overall. Mercury is actually also trining Pluto. And uh, that is about research. That is about uh, making you realize that there are some type of thought patterns which needs to be released. Uh, it's about coming up with some great, powerful idea. It might be something which you have already um, uh, thought about, but you haven't necessarily tapped into yet. And last but not least, Mercury actually conjunct uh, a fixed star also, which is Sualokin. Now, Sualokin, it's a... Um, um, it's a dolphin type of related um, energy. 
Um, Sorry, actually, I made a mistake. It's not a conjunction. It acts like a conjunction because it's a parallel um, aspect. Now, if you are unaware of the parallel, that's something to do with the, not necessarily with the longitude, but the magnitude. Anyway, we're not going to um, kind of jump into that, uh, what a parallel uh, planet is. But um, um, sua lokin, if we started talking about that, it's it's kind of like a dolphin related uh, uh, um, um, asteroid, and it sits on seventeen degree of Aquarius. So actually, for instance, in my case, it is conjuncting um, conjuncting my son, for instance, and I've always uh, was very fascinated actually by um by um, dolphins i really love them and i still really love them actually so anyway sualokin is uh, the brightest star from uh, delphinus and then it's located in the head of the dolphin uh, it is one of the brightest star uh, actually in that constellation um it is about being fearful. It's about love of hunting. But also it talks about how we can sell or someone who has got this um, kind of constellation could really talk about ability to sell an idea. I kind of feel like this new moon is about selling an idea to others. And uh, not necessarily about becoming rich by it though, but it's more likely about uh, convincing and that's where Pluto is also coming into the picture that you have got the ability to convince others from your uh, for your own truth now this new moon actually uh, conjunct uh, two uh, asteroids one of them is Megaira and the other one is Sekhmet now Megaira is uh, actually one of the Furies and if we start thinking about what the task of Furies was, then it was about pursuing people who did things that they were wrong and they made them kind of crazy. Um, we're talking about something to do with uh, dealing with people who did crime or they murdered someone, all these type of uh, negative things also. So this is talking about kind of like actually a murder case or it could talk about a rape case or it could talk about something which gets blown out of the proportion i'm thinking about this uh, johnny depp type of situation this chart is kind of talking to me about how far it can actually reach in a certain way whether it's made up or not because i know some people kind of think that oh they are actors and obviously they want to get some publicity Maybe you are right, but it can really get blown out of the proportion. And it kind of makes thing, uh, makes people think. And I, I kind of believe that this Mercury retrograde with this Plutonian influence, it could really talk about that some of the truth will be also coming out. Megaira is also something to do with jealousy as well at the same time. So I kind of feel like that there is there might be actually a jealous third party coming into the picture and so on. Now, it is about, you know, the question is when the furies are actually haunting you, the question is how are you going to be responding to that? So it's about making the right choice as well. Um, and the other one was, um, uh, or the other um, asteroid which is conjuncting there is Sekhmet. Um, Sekhmet in Egyptian mythology is known as the goddess of war. She's kind of like acting like a dispenser of justice and um, also it's about making elements of judgment. So this new moon can talk about uh, a case where there's going to be a judgment going on, but also it could be talking about what type of kind of like communications uh, there is going to be happening um, uh, with this war type of uh, situation. But also, Sekhmet is something to do with, actually, it's a lioness type of goddess. So it really talks about power. And when it connects to Mercury, for instance, it could really talk about a powerful thinker. Um, 
she was said to have ty- uh, two types of personality or two sides to her personality. One of them is uh, the very disciplined and strict one. But also we have got the other side, which is about the freedom lover or someone who just wants to go with the flow and doesn't want to be rest- restricted whatsoever. Um, so sometimes it talks about uh, having to deal with uh, a, pers- uh, a dual persona or having to deal with two different type of kind of situation at the same time. And how I am going to be kind of uh, juggling between two tasks. And that's something you're going to have to be careful because Mercury retrograde in the sign of Taurus uh, being trained by Pluto might not be able to juggle between tasks. So it could really talk about how you are going to be actually uh, kind of like um, uh, prioritizing what actually is important for you. Uh, now, Sekhmet is all about power. She's an Egyptian goddess. And as I mentioned, she was associated with war. And what she did was, uh, even uh, after death, she was actually protecting her people. <coughs> and her role was about protecting, basically, her people even after life also. So... Whenever we are talking about an element of a war, we also talk about some healing as well. And healing is something to do with how you are going to be healing the power within you. And that's where you're going to have to think about some type of uh, solutions. And that's what I think this uh, new moon really talks about. Uh, There are other um, uh, asteroids involved here as well. Uh, I don't necessarily, uh, I mean, actually, I do believe that one of them is quite important, and that's Hebe. And I did make a video about Hebe before. She was kind of like a cupbearer to the gods, and she was bringing ambrosia to the gods, which is very much about the, um, the secret to a long life of the gods. So she was about, she is the goddess of youth. She was very beautiful when it comes to her uh, appearance, and she was always playful and youthful overall. So we might need to be thinking about, you know, that I'm not too old. Uh, Maybe I need to look at things in a more progressive or youthful way overall. We need to think about you know, how, for instance, a teenager would actually approach such thing. And think about Mercury square um, Saturn as well at the same time, which is uh, which could indicate that I'm limiting my way of thinking. And last but not least, there is one more thing which I wanted to mention to you uh, in regards to this new moon, is that it's actually conjuncting a quite a nice fixed star also, and it's called Aldebaran. So Aldebaran is, uh, has got the nature of Mars, but uh, it tends to be giving honor, intelligence, popularity. So this new moon is very good for kind of dealing with your fears, why you don't want to be kind of uh, popular. It's really talking about responsible positions in the world. So who do I respect? Who do I not? Uh, Do I get any type of public honors? Maybe you are writing a book, for instance, and, uh, you know, it could be auspicious time to actually launch that book. But also it does talk about that danger and violence as well. Danger, violence and some type of sickness as well at the same time. So it's a mixed uh, fixed star, but it has got a kind of a spiritual side to it as well. It does say that we need to be courageous before we get eaten up inside out, uh, before we kind of get sick, because I feel like I'm not moving anywhere. So guys, this is my interpretation on this uh, interesting uh, new moon. So I hope you have enjoyed that. And then if you did, press like. And see you next time. Bye.